Hello and welcome back to this special edition of 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle explaining as simply as possible the world around us. This week in a very special edition of 5 Minute Geography I give you an insight into my online lecture on the distribution of solar radiation. So today really what we want to look at is the uneven distribution of solar energy. Now what that means is the way in which the sun heats up the earth unevenly. When we look at the uneven distribution of solar energy, we're going to look at it under three aspects. The first aspect is the curvature of the earth. So the shape of the earth, how does that affect the uneven distribution or the uneven heating of the earth? The second aspect we look at is uh, how altitude, which is height above sea level, affects the uneven distribution of solar energy, as well as the direction in which a slope is facing. This is known as aspect. Then finally, we look at how the sea and the ocean can influence the distribution of solar energy. Our first aspect is the curvature of the earth. So solar energy is unevenly distributed around the earth's atmosphere and ocean environment. The first aspect is the effect the curvature of the earth has on the distribution of solar energy. Latitude is basically the distance a place is from the equator. The shape of the earth is curved and therefore places in direct line with the sun receive maximum heat or maximum solar radiation. For example, Ecuador. Solar radiation decreases with distance from the equator. At the poles, energy is distributed across a larger area and therefore the solar rays become weaker. So it has to travel a short distance to the equator but it's spread out at a wider distance when it comes to the poles. The Earth's atmosphere does two things really. It absorbs solar energy, but it also reflects solar energy. If you have solar radiation traveling through the Earth's atmosphere, it's being absorbed and reflected. there's something called the albedo effect. Now the albedo effect simply is the reflection of solar energy back into space. Looking at this diagram here, if you think about Spain, for example, a lot of houses in Spain are painted white. The reason for this is white or light colors reflect solar energy. So keeping the inside of the house a bit cooler. But if we think of this in terms of geography, anything white, so like the polar ice caps, snow, uh, dust or debris in, within the atmosphere, also cloud cover, reflects solar energy. This makes the area cooler. If you have more absorption of solar energy through the atmosphere and more reflection of solar energy through the albedo effect, only a certain percentage of the solar radiation actually reaches the Earth's surface. Solar energy reaches the Earth, we know this as short wave radiation. Only around 45% of solar energy reaches the Earth, with about 26% being absorbed or reflected back into space by clouds or dust particles and snow. Also about 25% of solar radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere. So the sun does not heat the atmosphere. The sun heats the earth and the earth in turn heats the atmosphere. As we move away from the poles, the angle at which the rays strike the earth is lower because the earth is curved. For example, Alaska lies 50 to 55 degrees north of the equator. And as a result of that, the average January temperatures are about minus 29 degrees Celsius. If we look at Egypt, for example, which is 15 to 30 degrees north of the equator, the temperatures on average are in January plus 20 degrees Celsius. So there is a huge difference and this is due to latitude. 
or the curvature of the earth. The second aspect we look at is altitude and aspect. Altitude is height above sea level and aspect is the direction in which a slope is facing. Altitude and aspect play a major role in the uneven distribution of solar energy. With regards to altitude, temperatures decrease by about 1 degree Celsius for every 100 meter you go up in height. This is due to the thinning of the atmosphere and to the increase of cloud cover around mountainous regions. The drop in temperature in mountainous areas can be seen by the position of the snow line. Above the snow line, the temperature is below zero degrees, so snow can stay on the ground. This also further increases the albedo effect. This can be seen in Mount Kilimanjaro. At high altitude, the amount of oxygen in the air is reduced. As we go higher, the baromic pressure falls. This falls for the same reason as when we are submerged deeper in water, the pressure rises. Air pressure and air temperature decreases with altitude. The closer the molecules are packed together, the more likely they are to collide. This collision between molecules gives off heat, which in turn warms the air. At higher altitudes, the air is less dense and air molecules then are more spread out. And because they're more spread out, they're less likely to collide and therefore less likely to produce heat. Mountain ranges have really two effects on the climate and the surrounding region. The first effect is the creation of a thing known as a rain shadow, which brings a warm, dry climate to the leeward side of the mountain range. However, the windward side, so the side in which the wind blows, receives a lot more rain. So a rain shadow is cast as a result. The second effect mountain ranges have is the separation between coastal regions and the inner or inward land. So the separation in the coastal region and the rest of the continent since maritime air, or air affected by the seas and oceans, maritime air may have trouble rising over a mountain range. The coastal area will have a maritime climate, but the land or the inland area on the leeward side will have a continental climate. Aspect refers to the direction in which the slope is facing. So in the northern hemisphere, south-facing slopes have a southerly aspect and tend to be warmer than north-facing slopes. This is because the sun's rays hit them more directly and shine for a longer period of time on them. In addition to this, there is less shade. For example, in Germany, grapevines are grown on south-facing slopes. The third aspect is how the seas and the oceans influence solar energy or the heat from the sun. The sea has a very important influence on the distribution of solar energy around the globe. The temperatures of a region is strongly influenced by seas and lakes, so really large bodies of water. Land and sea absorb heat or solar radiation at different rates. The sea acts really like a huge storage heater. It heats up slowly over the summer, and by the time winter arrives, it's much warmer than the land. Over winter months, the sea gradually loses its heat to the wind that blows over it. These winds blow over the land and moderate the winter temperatures. So the sea really prevents extreme highs or extreme low temperatures. For an example, Ireland and Moscow are on the same latitude, more or less. However, Ireland has an average summer in terms of temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. The average or mean winter temperature is between 1 to 5 degrees Celsius. When we look at Moscow, Moscow in the summertime can reach to 25 degrees Celsius, but during the winter months 
can go below minus 25 degrees Celsius. This gives Moscow a range of 50 degrees, while Ireland only has a range of about 9 degrees, so therefore there's no extremes. Because Ireland is surrounded by water, it is that large mass of water that regulates the temperatures so that there are no extremes. Because water and land heat up at different rates, water heats up a lot slower and cools down a lot slower and the land heats up a lot quicker and cools down a lot quicker. This is because land surfaces are opaque so heat is absorbed only at the surface whereas water being more transparent allows some solar energy or some solar radiation to penetrate to a depth of many meters therefore absorbing the solar energy. Ocean currents are generated by something called salinity and temperature difference. Salinity really refers to the amount of salt in the water. If the water is more salty, then it's more dense, so therefore more likely to sink. If the water is less salty, it's less dense and therefore rises. So this creates currents known as density currents. So cold, salty water sinks while warm, less salty water rises. Warm currents are generated around the equator and move to the poles. And cold currents, cold ocean currents are generated at the poles or higher latitudes and move down towards the equator. Warm currents, such as the North Atlantic Drift, raise the temperatures of the air above it. And this is an important concept. The temperatures within the oceans influence the temperatures of the air above it. So the North Atlantic Drift that originates in the Gulf of Mexico moves towards Western Europe and just off the west coast of Ireland. This warm current heats the air above it and keeps Ireland ice free in the winter time. The North Atlantic Drift originates in the Gulf of Mexico and moves towards Western Europe with the help of the winds. Not only does it keep temperatures warmer, but it also brings with it increased rainfall because when you have cold air meeting the warm air that has been warmed by the North Atlantic Drift, you get two air masses meeting, the warm air is forced to rise and therefore condensation and precipitation occur. Cold currents, for example, like the Canaries current, have an effect on regions such as regions around West Africa. The Canaries current, for example, keeps Western Africa a lot drier than it should be. So that's it really. That's how we explain the uneven distribution of solar energy around our globe. We look at the effect that the Earth's curvature has on the distribution of solar energy. We then looked at how altitude and aspect play a major role in the uneven distribution of solar energy. And finally, we looked at the sea and how it has an important influence on the distribution of solar energy around our globe. As always, I've been Stephen Doyle with 5 Minute Geography. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, please click the like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic, please just pop it in the comment section below.